it was a great honor to give the Watty Fletcher lecture this year and to remember one of our founders. Uh, and the point that I really wanted to get across more than anything else is that um, I've seen some enormous changes in interventional radiology in my career. And I think one of the exciting things and one of the things going forward with interventional radiology is how things are going to change and how important it is to embrace that change. And I think young interventional radiologists at the moment have got a very exciting future to look forward to. Certainly uh, since I was appointed into post, we almost didn't have any input into any kind of oncology treatment. So the interventional oncology field has completely started from scratch. Uh, and there's been enormous developments in terms of the kind of procedures that we get ourselves involved in now. When I was appointed as a consultant, we used to do diagnostic arteriograms for gastrointestinal bleeding. Uh, and now we pretty much almost never take a patient to theatre. They almost always dealt with particularly lower GI with an embolization procedure. And, and that's come about by improvements in the imaging, improvements in the technology that we've got available to, to deliver and, and the ability for interventional radiology to provide a 24 hour service. So GI bleeding and trauma is another, is another area where we've really taken off from almost no input when I was appointed as a consultant to really being part of a central trauma team uh, to the extent that now most major trauma centers will try and have a group of interventional radiologists who are available within 30 minutes in order to provide limitation to bleeding loss. And I think to underpin success and to make progress, first of all, the most important thing is it's got to provide a benefit for a patient. Uh, but on the background behind that is, is enthusiasm to see change and to embrace change. And I think interventional radiology has been very good at that and I'm sure we'll continue to, to do that. And I think it's really important as well to do that in partnership with industry. Uh, we are very dependent upon and use a lot of high-tech devices and the development of those devices is what really makes the difference. As I, I was just talking about GI bleeding and one of the reasons we didn't treat GI bleeds was because the coils were big and they were cumbersome and they were difficult to deliver. Nowadays we've got micro catheters and micro coils and we can really get right to where the bleeding is a problem. So I think it is a combination of it needs to work for the patient, we need to embrace it, and we need the technology to allow it to happen. Evidence generation is really important. Evidence is king really, isn't it? Um, but it can be difficult. There are some things that we do that are really not really suited to level one randomized data. Uh, and that's slightly difficult, particularly when trying to present, present things to people like NICE who who see level one data as the most important data and, and they're not wrong in doing that, but sometimes it just isn't suited to that. So I do think it's important to get randomized data when we can and get as high level data as we can, but I think it's also important to do those cohort studies and particularly topical for BSIR at the moment is the establishment of an appropriate registry.